Well, I study a, a style called Chen style Tai Chi, and it's the original discipline that goes back to the Ming Dynasty. I've been fortunate enough that my teacher, when he came from China, he uh, exposed uh, this original discipline uh, in New York City, and uh, I've been practicing Tai Chi since 1991. So that's pretty much how long I've been practicing, and I've been teaching since 1995. Peng actually was introduced to me by one of my students, Santuali Woodard, and um, you know he, he seemed very knowledgeable, you know, in his discipline. And uh, what we did is we arranged a workshop kind of lecture here at the studio, and it went over very well. He, he was very well received, and he then he did a couple of workshops, and uh, eventually we started to collaborate, and I had him actually teaching classes out of the studio. So uh, we're very fortunate to have them to be a part of Dark Raven Studios. You know, I, my experience was that it, it comes from a, from a more martial place uh, where typically you will have people teaching Qigong from a very holistic health uh, environment and they, they kind of omit or get rid of the martial component. And uh, part of Qigong training is the conditioning and preparing the body and the arduous uh, type of training that requir that's required to build and to establish uh, your reservoir of chi flow. Um, if you don't do the road work like any other boxer or any other athlete, um, you're not gonna get very good results. So when Qigong is taught and the person who is teaching it did not do the foundational work, then in terms of chi flow and the expression of that chi, it becomes a very different uh, type of Qigong. So, so my experience has been that because of his background in martial art, uh, and his years of training in his method of Qigong, I felt that he was able to express something that was very unique and very different from what else is out there. You always wait to find out if someone is for real. And uh, one of the things that I've experienced in Peng's demonstrations with a lot of people in the audience is that he doesn't pick and choose who he's gonna treat or who he's gonna kind of uh, you know, practice the Qigong on. Um, it's kind of open-ended, and uh, that that type of uh, that type of uh, non-reservation lends itself to someone who really does know their discipline and and is very confident in, in their in their background, and um, and it was impressive, you know, to see him pinpoint an injury that was a pre-existing injury, and by a, a wave of his hand, he was able to interpret what that was, and uh, again, and that that's something that you know went over very well with the spectators and people in the audience. And, um, you know, and I think that's also why we wanted to continue to have that program here because I think he's offering something very unique and very special. He, even though youthful, um, does really dig deep, uh, is a, a studier of knowledge, you know, is not someone who will shy away from researching, you know, and, and putting his body on the line by training a specific way. And I think those are the attributes of, of a true uh, person that is uh, trying to achieve a level of enlightenment with a discipline. In this case, you know, he's put his time in as a young man, and currently as, as, a, as, a, as a man who is currently using this as a tool to help and improve people's lives, um, he offers something that's very unique and very special, and age is not a consequence of that. Experience comes from the amount of time you've invested into whatever. So if I was 12 years old, but I was doing, you know, like every day, 14 hours a day training, my age would have nothing to do with my ability. The ability was developed as a result of the training. And that's the difference between someone who is 100 years old or 90 years old, but no longer trains because they're too old and feeble. Uh, whereas you get someone who's younger, who has been doing the training and is consistently growing and is not jaded, is not, you know, been there, done that. You know, I think he, he is, still has this, this look of, of youth where when children look at something and are discovering something for the first time, they're hungry for knowledge. They are trying to express themselves. And I think that youthful nature is something that Peng has naturally. Um, but, but embedded with that is his ability to explain, in a very layman's terms, you know, the concept and ideology of what Qigong is and how it's represented in, by the way he teaches it. And uh, yeah, I think he definitely is a, an old soul. Although youthful, he, he does have a, 
an understanding of this as a, a person who was much older, beyond his age, um, but intellectually understands the material as a young man and is able to express it as an old man, and no pun intended. <laughs>